as stated since finding this first, I've found several other eggs that have what I claim to be OE spores upon them. So what follows is the experimental setup for essentially five additional OE spore laden eggs. Alright, time to go. Ready? Check it out. Now I've already confirmed with my handheld microscope that I've got several eggs here. Probably an egg drop, an egg bomb from the same female because they are all infested with OE spores. Not infected, that'd be internal, but infested. So, I'm going to find the most infested six for our experiment. Now here is egg number one, and this is not a milkweed leaf, this is a morning glory leaf. It was wrapped around the top of the milkweed plant, so I think the female got just a little bit confused. Here is egg number one. Here is egg number two. This here is egg number two. We do actually not only see the spores here, we also see some movement. This is egg number two. Egg number three. Egg number three. Milkweed made the handwriting tough on that one, but here's egg number four. Egg number four. Egg number five. Kind of a cool angle here. This is egg number five. And the gnarliest one of them, egg number six. I, I'm concerned if this one will hatch. I mean, I think it should. I'm not saying OE spores can make an egg not hatch. But perhaps a female was infested enough to be producing some ill-gotten eggs, some invalid eggs, I'm not sure. But number six is the gnarliest. A little bit misshapen. Actually, I think I see that this egg's kind of defunct. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to call it... <laughs> We're going to do five eggs instead of six. Um, you can see that top part of the egg is already just hollowed out. Yeah, the bottom part there. And that's uh, That egg's not going to hatch. Top part's translucent and hollow. It's all settled down to the bottom. This was not a viable egg. We got five eggs for the experiment. All right, so here's the five for the experiment. All right, in the recent episode, Urban Eggs and Leaves, I showed how to make the bleach treatment solution, as I have in some other episodes. So I'm going to skip showing how to make it. If you want to know how, check those out. And so we're going to give them one minute of exposure, just as we normally would. I've never honestly bleach treated a morning glory leaf before, but we'll see how that goes. I'm going to do all five here. And again, you can go a little bit... Just a little bit past a minute, but not much past. I don't want to go to two minutes. We're at 30 seconds. Okay, well, we are now at one minute. So I'm going to go directly into the water. Uh-oh. I see already some of the ink of the numbers is gone. Now, again, when you do rinse, you want to rinse for at least a minute. But going above one minute is only... That much healthier. I just don't want to accidentally lose one of these eggs, so I don't want to be too vigorous in my in my rinsing. But send them down to the bottom once, have them come back up. Be gentle. Be gentle. Number one. Number two. Number's kind of gone though. Number three. Number four. And number five. Here's our five. Now, this is the time of year, of course, being uh, August, mid-August for sure. These are to be reared outdoors, but I still do let them hatch indoors. And then once promptly hatched, outdoors they go. All right, experiment's underway. Okay, update. All five of the eggs we knew to be viable there, or assumed were viable, all five of those eggs have hatched. And so 
Now I do have, I, I don't know of course which numbers these are anymore, but we need a count of five, there's one. We're at two, three, and where's four? Four was right there. It's probably on the underside now. There's five, a little bit tinier. Yeah, on the edge there. He's also a little bit tinier. These hatched uh, yesterday, but it's now this evening, it's almost tomorrow. So we'll be placing them now that the rain is done, the storms have passed. We'll placing them in the outdoor rearing uh, tomorrow during the day. Well, those two guys are just kind of hanging out there. There's two of them. So this guy was hiding earlier. So there's three. And there's number four. And there's number five. Do, do, do. All right, as we clean up some stuff and change out some food, here's some documenting of, uh, here's our five test subjects. Doing pretty good. Difference in sizes, interesting to me, I think. Um, all being like, you know, reared the same conditions. If we assume, and I think it's a relatively safe assumption, that these are all siblings from the same female, just to get to see like what variance in size just to get to see what variance in size they really do have but, all right let me get back to cleaning up hey guys stop it now admittedly this area of the yard has not quite been figured out yet and what I found is like a craft paper kind of bag this is pretty good for um, giving some extra shade if they need it it will be a little bit optional I found that the uh, the shipping tape works pretty good on the plastic which I usually have on the up position just to protect from rain when it happens I use the craft paper because hey when it's moist when the rain does occur you're usually pretty comfortable throwing this away all right and there's our rock snippers one two three four and five and so they are all looking to be soon to make their chrysalides Yep. See already. One of them has dared to be different. Here actually was the first of our five that went for the J-Hang and decided to do it right there. Not the first time that I've had that happen. Sometimes I tend to like that spot. But the rest... They decided that up in the corner there is the perfect spot. So, the chrysalides have formed. brought them in just to kind of get some quieter video to show now what you see right there so this one was the first to J hang and these guys followed soon after and you can also see too this one over here also starting to become a transparent color Slowly but surely. Okay, so another couple of days. All right. I'm tired of moving this table though. Ah, back outside. All right, home from school. We've had one already closed. The first one, of course, the J hang. And the others, they are at their various uh, levels of progress, I guess we could say, towards e closing. And pretty soon but apparently not today. And we do have the one that did he close. Nice healthy female and she's ready to go. So she will be departing before the others do. All right, let's test her though. Let's get the results. And there she is. The first of five. As I've shown before in uh, OE testing video, I'm holding her by the wings just where they meet the thorax so that way uh, the wings are not able to flex so she can't really flap and sometimes I do get into this like almost hypnotic pose when this occurs and then I use my other finger here to just touch the abdomen out a bit my tape is on my middle and thumb 
finger, my index finger then is there to collect the sample. Just a little bit, just a touch and that's it. That's all I need. I place her back in and then I shall examine it. And by examine it, I mean place it here on this note card. We'll take a look at this underneath the big guy. Alright. Moment of truth. I like that. Get a little bit of light this way. Looking clean. Zooming in here. It's that little speck. That's nothing. Yep. They have a Pretty clean specimen here. Dirt on the tape, or possibly the camera lens, or microscope lens, maybe. Does it move with the card? It does move. Dirt with the tape, possibly there. No clumping of scores. Okay. We have some. We have some incredibly clean scales here. Looking good. <coughs> Neighborhood kids are celebrating, in fact. It's that clean. Awesome. All right, little girl. Good luck. Make it to Mexico. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Um, I gotta wait in some suspense, but uh, I guess here comes the next tests. Alright, I've had to move this table in and out so often for this, but uh, pretty important scene here, and I want to do the OE testing in here just in case. Don't want any little early releases, you could say. But um, all other four have you closed now. No specific order of numbers, but there's one, number two, three and four. First, we got a female here. There we go. Let's see what we got. And, and, yeah. We are, where's the rest of them? There's some more. We are looking good. Oh yeah, there's a good collection of them. No spores. Oh yeah, here's a good, plentiful look. All from, I don't know if you want to call this number one or number two. It's the second test. First one was already released, so we'll call this number two. Number two is clean. Excellent. Um, I'm going to take now just the next three tests all in a row as far as collecting the scales. And then I'll examine them under the micro after we've got them, just also for less stress on the monarchs. Test number three. Got a male here for number four. Number four. All right, five of five. 4 of 5 was a male. This is our second male of the batch of 5. The other first three we tested were females. There we go. Okay. We got our samples. 3 of 5, 4 of 5, 5 of 5. Let's take a look. Sample 3 of 5. We are clean here with three of five, but assuming the others are clean as well, and we're not going to assume it, we're going to test it, but assuming that they are, we're going to take a look at some actual OE spores under the microscope again, just to kind of have a good comparison. But yep, three of five is clean. All right, four of five. Going in blind. What we got? I've been going in blind for all these, but hey, we are looking clear. I mean, I do want to still thoroughly, of course, check, but all over the, the scales that I collected, I don't want to just do a spot check on it. But if you're going to see OE spores, man, they're going to they're going to show up everywhere. 
on the abdomen. It might be a lighter or heavier infestation, but they'll still show up. Pretty much, you'll notice as soon as you put it under the microscope. Be it handheld or the big one like this one. All right, four or five is clean. Might be crossing the finish line here. All right, five of five. Here we go. Oh, the truth. If I can find the scales. Oh, okay, here we go. Yeah. We are looking. We are looking good. Oh, E free. Hoorah! Cross the finish line. Now let's show you an actual infested sample. For comparison reasons. Here's a note card I dug out from last year. Let's get some proper focus here. There we go. So, yep, here is an infestation. And you can see also, like, yep, it's a possibility that they can be just lone individual spores, but they often do clump together. And even like a light infestation would have multiple spores to look at in just one camera view. So, I mean, if you're testing and there's like just a speck of something, it's probably a speck of just something. Now, on an egg, I mean, only a few spores need to come off to cause the egg a problem, and only a few spores do come off. Um, you think about it like butterflies are fluttering around, they're dropping these spores when they are infested, and so plenty are coming off of them, and yet they got plenty to go around. So it only takes one of these to be ingested by a caterpillar, and that caterpillar is then infected. People have asked before too, so what can you do once they're infected? And the answer is nothing. It is going to be, it's going to be an infected individual um, when the spores then are multiplying during chrysalis uh, and the adult body is forming. Some of those resources are going to multiply the OE spores. And then the adult does come out with the OE spores on the external part of the body. So that's what they look like. Uh, but those clean tests, it's a reason to celebrate. Let's let these guys out. You guys have cleared customs. Quite ready for departure, and I think you'd agree. Ready to go. Let's get you out. Okay, this has been a journey, but a fortunate one. From a chance occurrence of spotting some OE spores on an egg, to getting more curious about the OE that's out there, we were able to take in five eggs, ensure that they made it to adult status, and was able to use bleach treating to prevent the OE infection. Some good testament to OE bleach treating and what it can do to help out your process, help keep things sanitary. A really good warning too to what kind of OE could be out there. I think for me, because of the convenience of how easy it is to do it, I'll be checking each of my eggs with the microscope first just to kind of get a feel. How often is OE something I encounter where I'm at? But all right, enough out of me. Well, let's get them on their journey. I am Rich Lund. Thank you so much for your interest in the conservation efforts of the monarch butterflies. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for all that you do. I'll see you next time.